ran over the porta potty. What's up, guys? It's Mike, the Smoking Monkey. Welcome back or to the channel. And this is part three of our season opener run at Scotch Line in Minden. And if you guys missed part one and two, then definitely go check those out because there was some good content in there. But today there was uh, a few eventful things that happened. We had a TJ get flooded. We had a couple uh, people get stuck and we also had a bit of a, uh, well, we had the longer water crossing, but we also had a bit of a, a body damage uh, that involved two vehicles. And I tried to get as much as I could on tape, but uh, I did die. The camera did die at one point and I didn't get everything, but I got as much as I could. And believe me, it's a good video. It's going to be interesting. So without me wasting any more of your time, let's jump in there and let's check it out. That thing was a lot deeper than I remember and uh, yeah that's probably why we didn't go through it last year you can see I've got a good amount of water inside or had it drained now but yeah good stuff and not just me uh, there's a few of us that had water inside especially the TJ's let me just say that uh, there's not a proper floor in either of them. <laughs> so we need to get some, uh, some new floorboards or some new floor panels and just get those in there. But right now we're dealing with sort of a recovery. As you can see, we're turning around. This is the end of the trail, but unfortunately the gladiator didn't make it over this little hump here and we got to give her a little pull. So it was hung up over here in the middle on the skid but then when you backed it up, it kind of went over there and that's where it stuck. But you were stuck here. Yeah. Now it's stuck there too. So it's stuck on the arm and in the center. Yeah, your diff is right in there. Good right there so we're turning around now we're just heading back through the same way we came and we're gonna do that deep water crossing and i know that last time it was not fun i got lots of water inside <laughs> all right buddy lift your feet Oh, 
it's coming in. Look at the wave we just made. And I don't want to go too fast because then I'm going to get water over the hood and into the intake. So, can't go too nuts. the hill I want to let it drain so it doesn't go into the back seat oh and it went everywhere it's already there my amp survived my amps are back there on the floor and uh, I'm not the one who installed them whoever installed them before me wasn't really thinking cuz uh, yeah I have to wait off to the side I'm gonna climb it but I'm gonna wait first for me to drain I hit a bump and the Jeep took a shit on me. Um, I, you can't make this up. <laughs> and believe me, that wasn't from my pants. I promise you guys. But a lot of people are having a lot of trouble. Like, I walked up that shit. But let's go see the other people doing this because it's not easy. Yeah, it's pretty slick. The other couple people didn't make it. I think only two or three of us made it up that section. And uh, I'm glad I did. And look at the bright side. Everything is drained. Oh, well, there's a little bit over there. But everything over here is drained. And the back is also dry. And I sure hope this light is waterproof. Because it's a great fucking light. And I really like it. And I'm not going to try to turn it on right now. So let me just show you guys how deep that was. You can see there's like all kinds of debris and stuff everywhere. The winch got submerged, but it was probably at least up to the Big Bird. Like you can see there was a water line right around there and not bad. Yeah, see they're probably somewhere closer to there. Not bad, not bad at all. You can see, yeah, all the way through to the back. But on the bright side, we got a nice undercarriage wash. So there's something a little bit precarious happening over here. Um, I think he tried to create his own path or something and it's not really going that great because uh, he's been on this hill for the past like 15, 20 minutes. He's making his own way though. He basically, yeah. he was going this way, he got stuck. So the other day and told him to go that way and here we are. So yeah, the, he was basically going up this way guys and it wasn't really going that well because you can see how slick it is. Everything is still really soft and mushy from all the rain that we've been getting. But that's not working out too well either, I guess. Okay, so the other JL, the other built JL, they both look like twins, I guess, but they're completely different builds. Uh, those ones, well, that one, the other one is going to go up the hill and try to winch the first one that went up the hill. Hopefully it works. Uh, by hopefully, I mean hopefully he makes it up the hill, but look how nasty this thing is. And the bugs are relentless. I really don't understand why they're out this early, but they are nuts. So you guys can see 
It's really slick out here. And there's this big rock to climb. Those are 40s, by the way. So that's a pretty good sized rock. Yeah, that's just tow hook. But it's like dead center of the tow hook. You're not gonna move. Maybe go forward a little bit. Yeah, cut right there. Let me try. Hold on, he's gonna try to back up over it. Oh, you're trying to back out now. Okay, okay. I thought you were still trying to go. No, just zero track. Unfortunately. Try that. Alright, try cutting passenger. If you can. Nice, you barely even touched. Well, he got off. Nice. And uh, it looks like carving your own path isn't always successful, especially out here with the stupid terrain that we have. But you guys can see just me walking down it how, uh, how steep and how nuts this is and how dug out. But yeah, luckily we got him out. Let's keep rolling and like I said, we're on the way back out now, so I'm not gonna bore you guys with too much But as soon as we find some good obstacles or something interesting on the way out as always I will get you guys that footage. So let's keep rolling and let's see what we do Got the Jeep looking like a swamp thing So the other JL came in and decided it wanted to try <laughs> So I don't think anyone else is trying this section and let me just show you guys just for uh, for a little bit of an idea why <laughs> so that's my knee and that's the top of where it is and it gets deeper than that and my shoes about to come off from standing in here oh nice so basically that's why I'm not trying it because I'm gonna get hung up hundred percent uh, if we had a bigger lift or bigger tires, then yeah, I would go for it. But I know that this is uh, a fool's errand. We're not going to make it. Well, good yeah, stuff, we got him off. Uh, now yeah. let's keep going. So see guys, from that last one, no water inside. Still dry in here, and that is because it was only about two feet of water. Anything over that, probably around three feet, if it starts to come up above the hood, that's when you have an issue, and that's when we actually have water coming in. Did you get lost, came, sir? My ship knob came fucking straight at me. <laughs> that's why mine is all crooked and it's not lined up, because I have it... Oh, what the fuck? Mine screws on. <laughs> okay, Get I guess we're good. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a Jeep, man. It just breaks. That's what happens. 
Somebody ran over the porta potty. Like for why? For why, guys? These swampers really live up to their name. They really don't care about mud. Uh, like I'm the only one that has not slipped in the mud, has not had an issue, has not hesitated. And every single person in the group today has told me how impressed they are with this thing. And <laughs> honestly, I'm so impressed with it because it's a beast. These tires changed everything. It honestly drives like a whole different animal. Yeah, you guys saw that right. Uh, buddy just reversed up that shit. That's nuts. Yeah, so yo, we gotta go back and get him because his starter died, but I don't have tow hooks. So the other yellow TJ, uh, the starter died on it, I think. Uh, at least that's what he, he believes happened because he's in the middle of the water section and he cannot get going I think it stalled on him and he can't start it back up so it's either his starter or he flooded and I'm hoping he didn't flood because if he flooded then it's gonna be a lot harder to get him out and a lot harder for him to get home so let's cross our fingers and hope it's just a starter okay like he's dead and he's pulling him pulling him yeah, that's probably the best vehicle to be doing it. so I, w I wonder if it flooded or if it just didn't want to start again well uh, hopefully it starts back up once we get him back on this side Give it a good kick in the starter and see. Fuck. Fuck, it died like right here? Yeah, like I got no starter, man. I don't know what that No, we'll go fix it. We'll figure it out right now. We're gonna go help you fix it. So yeah, we don't know if it's the starter or if it is a flooded engine, but it doesn't want to turn over. So we're hoping it's just a starter. Let's go and uh, see what we can do. It's too deep, man. I saw it from here. Oh yeah. So basically we got it out. We pulled it right to the beginning of the trail here where we basically began. And let's see what we can do to get it running again. <laughs> Adam is really saturated. So that's uh, not a good sign. Your starter's right there. If you want to try maybe hitting it with something to see if it starts. Try cranking it now. Hold on, Mike. Hold on. Just clicking. It's not getting any power. Is it should it at least click, no? But what would click. What water would water. cause it to not get power to the starter like that? Water. Yeah? Electrical shortage? Yeah. Electrical shortage. It happened to my friend, he was like buried to like here sideways. Like he was like completely sitting in water and we pulled him out and we pulled all the plugs and let it dry out. It had, yeah, yeah, it pooched the starter. Hmm. So we've been trying to start it, uh, it's clicking, it's not making any starting noise, so the starter's not activating. We're thinking it's either the starter or it might be bigger issues, so first thing we're going to do is try to roll it and bump start it. Since we have a little bit of a straightaway right here, it's a little bumpy still, but since we have sort of a straightaway, we're going to try to bump start it, and if that is the, the case, if it starts, then at least we know it's just a starter and it's not anything bigger. But there is a bit of water in the air filter, so it did suck up some water. Hopefully it's not hydro-locked. The filter looks, filter looks dry now. Uh, so yeah, we've tried hitting the starter and it's not, not helping. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to pull it and try to bump start it. So we're going to give him a pull, see if we can bump start it right now. Uh, I think we're going to try to push him back a little bit further just so he has a little bit more runway over here. And then we'll go, hopefully start it. Yeah, yeah, he wants to start. Give gas, give gas. Oh, yeah, I know. 
You you got the right idea. Once you get it started, put it in neutral and give it some gas so that it burns off all the uh, the moisture. Okay. But well, it's gonna start. It's started. I heard it. It wants to start. It wants to. It's moisture. I've had mine sound exactly the same. If you get it going, it'll fucking go. I've heard it. Like lights are still on. Everything. You should probably get in the driver's seat. Okay. Yeah. I feel like just I gotta do. I feel like I gotta Wait, do you almost yeah, had it, buddy. Just keep the clutch down. Okay. Yeah, like, like let, not now. Let off of it, and yeah. when it starts, give it gas. When you start neutral. hearing it, slant, like you have your foot on the clutch, and then you're in neutral, right? <laughs> come back, come back. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's why I noticed it a second when you started moving. Fuck. I told him, come back, come back. <laughs> no, we didn't tell him. Let's pull both trucks. Yeah, let's pull both trucks. No worries, man. Oh, what are you doing? What? Watch out. Oh, it's a rock. Is there a rock? Oh. We're going over rocks. That's right. Rock crawling. Let's go. Oh, fuck yeah. This is how you rock crawl. Like. <laughs> Get your workout in. Oh, Jeez. no, it is a hole. You're not Okay, we're good. That. We're good. That's as far as it's going to go. Unless we tow it back with another Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on fast. So drop it as soon as I have momentum. Once it starts, put it back into neutral and start to rev it a bit so that it burns off all that extra moisture. So quick update, we tried bump starting it like three, four times. Uh, it did start, but it ended up dying right away. So we're convinced that it has a bit of water in it. So we're gonna keep trying to bump start it once we get it out onto the actual road. So we gotta pull it out of the trail and get it onto the road and then we'll try bump starting it. But my camera is almost dead. So if my camera dies, then I will check in with you guys when I get back off the trail and let you guys know what happens. Yeah, Elijah got it running, bro. So I'm taping this on my phone now, so it looks a little different because all my batteries died in my GoPro, but we got it running. We got the other TJ running and we are almost out of the trail. So everything should be good. We are gonna just get him, uh, get him going, pull it out of the trail and he should be good to go and hopefully we see him again on the trail and not a water crossing trail uh something a little bit less hectic uh because i think uh, we can both use a snorkel me and him because uh i know i was pretty close to being in the same situation so believe me guys you don't want to be in that situation uh get yourself a snorkel or go out with friends because if you go out alone then uh you're really gonna get stranded so yeah <laughs> that was pretty much all the footage that i got uh on camera and just at the trail. Uh, I will say everybody got out safe, everybody got home safe, everybody got out. <laughs> uh, what happened from there was the TJ died right away basically, uh, I didn't want to stay running. So we had to get uh, the whole thing just basically pulled out for the rest of the trail. And there was about, let's say a kilometer of trail left, so like just under a mile uh so yeah we had a bit of trail left so we went through it and the brakes started to give out on the tj and that's when the tj had to kind of avoid hitting the truck when the truck stopped because the truck was still pulling it and yeah everything was okay and at one point there was a miscommunication between the two drivers and uh no one was in the jeep the truck pulled the jeep the jeep went into the side of the truck whole bunch of shit happened <laughs> I don't really want to get into it uh it wasn't really anybody's fault per se like I said it was bad communication uh nobody really let the guy in the truck know that no one was in the jeep and no one really said that he was gonna start pulling again because he stopped he saw we got out to check that everything was kind of okay and made sure that nothing was broken or nothing got damaged when uh he kind of had to avoid the truck and just go around him and kind of go into the bush but after that, we got him pulled out and there was a bit of damage on the truck. There was a bedside, there was a cab corner and the rear door. So quite a bit of damage. The TJ suffered a fender and a light. I'm not sure anything else. Uh, could have been something else. Like I said, uh, it wasn't really anyone's fault specifically. I'm not laying blame on anybody at all. I'm not choosing sides here <laughs> uh, basically I'm letting you guys know what happened and it was just a miscommunication between the drivers and my best advice to anybody that is either new to off-roading or is just out there off-roading make sure that if you are getting pulled or if someone is pulling you you guys have good communication or you have a good understanding of what you're gonna do just so that 
if anything happens or anybody does need to get out or if you're not sure of what's going on, you have a way of communicating to the other driver or you have a way of letting them know either by radio, by hand signals, by honking your horn, whatever the case is, uh, just to let them know that you wanna do something different, you wanna stop, you wanna get out, you wanna whatever. Just have good communication, once again. I'm not blaming anybody, they didn't communicate well, and that was, uh, yeah, they both suffered some body damage. I don't know if anybody had frame damage, but it wasn't pretty, <laughs> let me just tell you that. Uh, so yeah, eventually we got out of the trail, CAA came and picked up my buddy, uh, they got him out of there, and everybody got home safe. So yeah, that TJ, uh, it suffered uh, loss of brakes. The engine was, I think, flooded. I'm not 100% sure on how that is. I hope that it's still okay. I'm, I gotta find out. The, uh, the front fender and front light. I don't know about the grill or the hood. And also, I think he also needed uh, maybe a sway bar. I'm not too sure. But yeah, honestly, it was a good day. We all had a good day. Things happened on the trail. Things kind of went a little south at the end there, and uh, it wasn't very pretty. Uh, once again, I didn't get it on camera. I am not laying any blame on anybody saying that it was this guy's fault or that guy's fault or this all happened because of this. Shit happens. It's, uh, it's a day on the trail, and come expecting anything, because anything can happen. So hopefully everybody is uh, moving forward and coming back stronger and better with their vehicles. Uh, definitely I, I'm gonna help out anybody that needs some help with their vehicles and just be there for them with parts or labor or whatever they need to go out there and just do some work for them so stay updated on that if you guys want just definitely jump down there hit that subscribe button if you guys want to know what happens but most likely you will see those vehicles back on the trail and we are planning another trail day uh, I just finished two days of cleaning out my Jeep it was flooded inside as you guys saw a little bit so I just cleaned out the carpets, I'm cleaning the floor mats, and I basically detailed the entire Jeep. I just gotta vacuum it now because after you kind of uh, you clean the carpets out, there's still a little bit of dust and stuff after everything dries. So I'm gonna vacuum it all out, and it should be in mint. So it should be pretty much like a brand new Jeep again once we get it back out onto the trail. <laughs> and then we can mess it all up all again. <laughs> no, but hopefully there won't be too many deep water crossings and we won't get water in the Jeep. But Today is uh, Sunday. You guys are watching this on Monday if you're watching it the day it came out. And next Sunday, because Monday is the 10th, so on the 5th, not the 15th? Yeah, Friday. So this Friday, actually, on the 15th, uh, we're planning a trip and hopefully we will actually go through with it. But look out for that. We will be going up north and we will be doing uh, maybe another good trail day. I'm not too sure if it is planned 100% for this weekend or if it's going to be next weekend. But we're trying to go this weekend so we'll do our best and look out for that video guys so if you're new around here jump down there hit that subscribe button because you know there's going to be tons more action coming for you guys tons more mods and i'm still waiting for my control arms my rear track bar and for my uh drag link and tie rods so we're still going to be building up the jeep we've still got more parts coming and i've got a few more plans i've got a few more ideas that i, I want to do to the jeep so definitely watch out for that guys and once again, thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you guys for watching. And if you're new around here, jump down there, hit that subscribe button, because trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next. So until then, guys, ride safe out there. Peace.